In today's video, I review the new flexible resin from Hay Gears, the PATH 10. But before we get into today's video, I just want to share with you what the GGGGs are for this month. Each month, Bob the Beholder picks some of my Patreon supporters to receive gratitude gifts. And for this month of February of 2025, we have my Kickstarter version of Cthulhu Death May Die. We have a pledge for the Stage Top 2 Kickstarter. We have two pledges for the Curse of the Citadel Great Hall campaign. We have a pledge for the Grid City Gothic by Saucerman Studios. And then finally, we have $100 going towards a crowdfunding campaign, which my Patreon supporters voted upon. Go ahead and use the link below to go to my Patreon page where you can find out how you can get in on the chance of receiving one of these gratitude gifts. It only takes a dollar. And Bob will be making his pick this upcoming Sunday, March 2nd. So if you haven't seen my video for why I think the Hay Gears Ultracraft Reflex RS is one of the best printers on the market right now, go ahead and check out my review video of that. And I do want to say really quickly that during the month of March 2025, there is going to be a sale where it's $150 off for the RS. And then if you use my code, then you'll get an additional $50 off to bring down the total price to $809. That brings the price down to what I think is affordable and well worth the cost to get the best resin printer out there. Glad to hear that they came out with a more flexible resin. And this is the... PATH 10. This is going to go on sale in the middle of March. I think March 16th. So again, I'll provide links below if you do want to purchase this. Up to this point, my go-to resin with my Hay Gears is actually to use the PARP 10, which is a good balance between detail and flexibility and also cost. And the trick that I've been telling my viewers is to go ahead and buy just one bottle of the PARP 10, but then to buy the refill bottles of the PAS 10, P-A-S 10, because this bottle is only $32. And that makes it affordable and within the range of what regular resin costs. So really glad that they came out with this. And this has been my go-to resin where I've been doing 90% of my printing off of this resin. So is it worth it to pay the extra amount because this is gonna retail at $55 to get the more flexible version. Usually when you have a more flexible resin, you have a loss in some of the quality and details and as things get a little bit more mushy. And I've done a, a number of review videos. And if you're using a non Hay Gears model, then my go-to was to mix Sunlu Toughness with the Sunlu ABS. I felt like that was the right combination of both flexibility and detail that you could find. So how does that compare with this new flexible resin from Hay Gears? Let's go ahead and check that out. All right, first off, we're gonna do a quality of the print comparison. On the left, we have the PARP 10, and on the right is the new PATH 10. And I am surprised because the level of detail on the PATH 10 is actually more than the PARP 10. The reason why I'm surprised by this is because usually with more flexible resins, you get a softening of the features, but as you can see here, the detail is quite crisp. And here, let me zoom in on the scales just so that you can see what I'm talking about. So just note the amount of detail in this close-up of the skin and all of the bumps that you see here. And if you compare that to the PARP 10, which, you know, is no slouch. I think it has incredible detail too. It's just a little bit softer on the PARP 10. So I think I'm surprised that the PATH 10, even though it's more flexible, actually has greater detail. Now let's go ahead and compare this to the PAP 10, which in a, a previous comparison, I found to have the greatest amount of detail available to it. And if you see here, the PAP 10 has the same amount of detail as the PAP 10. 
which again, uh, I think I'm surprised by because I was expecting the details and the crispness of the print to be less. But in fact, we see that it is equal to the PAP-10, which is a harder resin than um, the PARP-10. And that's why I use the PARP-10, is I give up some of the quality for the better resilience and flexibility. But here we're having an example of where the more flexible resin of the PAP-10 is actually a greater amount of detail or equal to the detail of the PAP-10. So the quality I think is really good. Another look at quality is to look at the spaceship and the amount of crisp detail that is available here on this ship. So that's really interesting. So I don't think you're giving up detail of the prints at all with this flexible resin. Here's another side by side with the PARP-10 on the left and the PAF-10 on the right. Now, I think it's a little bit easier to see the details just because of the darker gray color, whereas this light gray, it's a little more challenging to see the amount of detail that is here. What I should do is just spray paint both of these a dark gray color so that you can see the details. But I do think that the PAF-10 does have slightly more detail evident to it. Now whether or not you're going to notice a difference when you are at tabletop height, I don't think that's the case. You would only notice a difference if you're doing close-ups like what I'm doing now. This model from the one-page rules um, shows you some of the detail difference because here on the left I actually used half Sunlu toughness and half Sunlu ABS to mix it together because the Sunlu toughness by itself was too flexible. But you can see that some of the details in this model is mushy. It's a little bit um, not quite as crisp. And then here we see the example of the PAF-10 model. And I just feel like that the details are a little bit more crisp on this model as compared to here on the left. And the reason why I printed these Furies in this um, more flexible material was because I didn't want these wings that are a little bit delicate to break off. So as you can see here, there's flex to it. So if you drop this thing, it's not going to snap off. If you were to use regular resin, even these chains underneath, there's a high risk of it snapping off even as you're taking off the supports. So for certain applications where you have really delicate parts like this, I do prefer to use more flexible resin. But you are typically giving up some detail for that flexibility. But here, as you can see, I have even greater flexibility, and yet the details are still very crisp, which I think is amazing because usually you have to give up one for the other. And with the PAF-10, you're not giving up detail and print quality for the flexibility. This model has even greater flexibility than the other one. I would not be able to do this with the PARP-10. Uh, PARP-10 actually does have a little bit of flexibility, but not nearly this much. So let's go ahead and do a test. So I printed out these aliens from one page rules, but I reduced it down to 50% size just because I wanted these whips to come out a lot thinner so that we can do a test. Now, as I mentioned, the PARP-10 actually is pretty flexible. I mean, check this out. Now, the way that I retain some of my flexibility with the PARP-10 is, is that I actually don't hit it with UV rays to cure it in a curing station. Actually, once um, I clean it in the alcohol IPA bath, I actually just remove the supports and I actually don't cure it more. Um, I think I do have to with the PAF-10 because there are certain spots where it's still there's still a little bit of resin on there that hasn't cured completely. So I might have to hit these with the 
curing station whereas I don't have to with the PARP-10. You can see here that the whips on this Alien is way more flexible than even with the PARP-10, which I don't think is that bad, but there's way more flexibility with this. I mean, I can do this pretty much with the whip. So that's pretty amazing. And yet at the same time, there is a good amount of stiffness that it isn't, doesn't feel like a, completely a piece of rubber. And of course, if you drop these, you know, it's not going to break at all. And if you're finding yourself, and that's the case here too, I mean, dropping it obviously from this height isn't going to do anything, but it does bounce quite a bit. Um, but let's go ahead, see f how far I can bend this before it breaks. So, yep, see how I couldn't pull it even that far before this snapped. And then I will also bend this portion and see. So not that far, right, um, before it snaps. Even though there's a certain amount of gift to it, um, it will snap and break relatively easily. Let's check this out again. You know, I can do this fine. Uh, let's see how far. So it does break, but I'm able to pretty much bend it almost twice as far as the PARP-10. And then here, let's see. Look at that. I'm able to fold it basically in half. Uh, it did snap at that point though, but almost in half before it broke. So a lot more flexibility, but it does have a breaking point. So it isn't so rubbery that you're able to move everything around without it breaking. At some point it will break. And I think that's the trade-off is that with this amount of flexibility, um, with too much flexibility, uh, you do lose detail. And I feel like they balanced or at least prioritized high quality of the prints made flexibility secondary because they could have made this more flexible. I mean, look, look how flexible that is. But I think they would have given up too much on the details. So let's look at this really thin one look at that I can straighten it out completely. And over time, I think it would go back. I'm not sure. But yeah, that's pretty amazing. Let's see if I can do that with the PARP-10. No, I can't. Just snaps. Yep, let's see. Another application that I might use this more flexible material is with units like these Wolf Sisters that have spears. So check that out. I do think it would, uh, let's see how far I can bend it before it breaks. Look at that. I can basically almost bend it upside down and I can push it back and shape it back. And then obviously if it drops on that spear, normally that spear would break. But uh, dropping these, I'm pretty confident, won't break them. But let's see how far I can bend this. There, I have to pretty much fold it in half in order to get it to break. And again, the quality is really high with these. So, do I think that the PATH 10 is worth the extra $22 to purchase this versus getting the refill bottles of the past 10. I do think that there are certain applications where you do need flexibility. As I mentioned in my quality and strength test portion of the video, but overall, I think I will still stick to the PARP 10 and the past 10 refill as my go-to just because of the price difference, because at $32 versus $55, this does feel like a specialty resin as it is more expensive. So in applications where you do need to maximize flexibility, I do think that this is worth the extra cost, especially because you have a higher level of detail than you do with this. But for the most part with tabletop wargaming, I think that you're not gonna be able to see that qualitative difference up unless you're really staring at it up close. Most of the time you're not doing that and paint is gonna cover up most of those details anyway. So 
I, I still think and recommend this option of just buying one of these bottles so that you are able to insert this into the machine, but refilling it with the more affordable Pass 10 at $32. This, I think, is still the way to go. But if you're finding yourself having a really spindly army or that you're dropping and breaking your models a lot, then definitely I think Path 10 is a good addition to the lineup of resins. And I know for some of you, getting the Ultracraft Reflex is not an option because they do use proprietary resin. But for me, it has been my go-to resin printer just because of how easy it is. So there you go, relatively short video. I know this applies only to those of you who are looking into the Hay Gears or you already have one. Again, use my affiliate link below if you are interested in purchasing the Hay Gears during the March sale. I do think that that is one of the best deals to get your hands on a resin printer that is pretty much as automated and hassle-free as possible. And again, the auto supports that I use on my Hay Gear Slicer is one of the best that I have ever used. Go ahead and make sure to click the like button and subscribe. As soon I'm gonna be coming out with a video showcasing how I am using different ship models to play Battlefront Valkyrie. In the meantime, I hope you have fun printing and painting up all of your miniatures for your tabletop hobbying. We'll see you later.